Hello there and welcome to the very first match preview of the 2019-2020 season. We are opening the Premier League on Friday evening against Norwich City, newly promoted from the Championship as they were champions last season. And from what I'm reading, they had 94 points after scoring 93 goals which is very, very impressive, to be fair. It's not an easy league, the Championship. People sometimes belittle it um, because it, it's the Championship. It's the lower league. But when they come up, and they've come up in such what seemed like a dominant style that Norwich came up, and with some key players that I think they, they've managed to keep, like uh, their goal scorer, Pookie, I think is his name. He scored about 29 goals or something himself. I might have that wrong, but he scored a hell of a lot of goals as well. Um but it seems to be also a style of play that, that Norwich have where they were able to use pace out wide. And this is after doing a little bit of research because I had not watched Norwich whatsoever last season. I had not watched Norwich one little bit. I didn't really watch much of the championship last season. But they like to use pace out wide you know, and have their players... I had one of the names in my head, but I can't remember what his name was now, who provided quite a lot of assists according to the statistics that I've looked at. And they want to use these technical players to unlock certain spaces for the like guys like this Puki who operates up front in, um, and scoring goals like that as well. A possession-style game. Let me just read my notes here. I need to read them. A possession-style game, yeah. Um, and it's, I wrote about, uh, yeah, Puki scored a lot. Uh, Max Ahrens, um, had a, he was one of the best young players apparently in all three divisions. Don't know why I brought that in there, but yeah. Anyway, but they've also done it in a different style to, say, a Wolves. They didn't, you know, Wolves were impressive in the Championship and they were also impressive in the Premier League. But Wolves had a, you know, they had a lot of investment in their team as well. They had a lot more investment while they were in the Championship, which was to then pretty much ready them for the Premier League. And then they made a couple more signs when that came and they came into the Premier League as well. They did it a different way. I think Norwich's net spend or gross spend of less than five million, um, that's impressive to do what they did in the championship. They could then, with that style of play that they've got, being a possession ba a possession based game, you know, having pace out wide, technical players in the middle, wanting to unlock spaces for the guys up front as well, that is a kind of playing style that will ready make you for the Premier League, if you know what I mean. Like, if you play something that way, you focus on possession, all right, against some of the bigger teams, maybe like a Liverpool, a Manchester City, that's not necessarily going to work because if you have a possession-based style of game, you're going to come up against players like that Man City have, like, let's say, Liverpool have as well, where we like to control the ball. Man City especially, they obviously love to you know, possess a lot of the possession and literally drill you to the wall with that possession, um, maybe that's not necessarily going to work. You're probably going to have to see this season um, Norwich have a plan B. I don't know if they had a plan B last season because I didn't watch them, to be honest. I didn't watch them out of like, oh my God, it's the championship. I just didn't have time to. I really just didn't have time to. I, I like to watch all different leagues, like even like the European leagues and stuff like that, but I just did not have time to. Um... So yeah, this is who we're going to be coming up against on Friday, 8 o'clock. I am absolutely gutted because I'm going to miss the first half because I finish work at 8 o'clock and I get home about 20 to 9. So yeah, I'm not looking forward to that. I hate not being able to see us play football. I really do. And I know I'm going to get to see the second half. I'm going to see get to see the sec you know how the game's going. But I just dislike, I really hate, I wish I could change my shifts, but I can't. I really, really can't. So yeah, I'm going to watch the second half and hope to God that the first half has gone well for us. So Norwich are going to come into this Premier League. They're going to want to do, they're going to want to, they don't want to be like your standard. I don't want to say it's standard, obviously, because Wolves sort of changed that standard. But no one else in the Championship is investing, as far as I'm aware, like they are. Um, to ready make themselves for the Premier League and what almost walk the Championship coming in, but Norwich are going to want to come into this with a different mindset and obviously maybe you know put a different impression on other Premier League opposition that they had last time. 
a lot of Liverpool fans are loving the fact that we're playing Norwich. Now, if you don't know, and you're not a Liverpool fan, you may be watching this, and if you, if you don't know, Luis Suarez used to have a field day against Norwich. That was five years ago. Time has passed. Luis Suarez has gone a long time ago. Whole team is completely different, and Norwich look like they're a different prospect entirely. If they come in and they put that play style together well in the championship, much better than when they used to play. Um, I can't remember who was their manager age, ages ago when we used to play them, and John Ruddy hates Luis Suarez. <laughs> Probably doesn't hate him, but you know what I mean. Um, if they come in and they, they put a different impression on, they put a bit of a marker down, then they'll, they'll do well. I don't see Norwich wanting to be that right. We're in the Premier League, and if we finish 17th, That'll be all right. I don't see them doing that. They're not a Cardiff, you know. You know what I mean. They're not a, like a Neil Warnock sort of team where it's like, lads, if we get seventeenth, success. I don't see Norwich wanting to do that. I think with the amount of goals that they scored, how creative they were. I think you know that little uh, between. Ah, uh, I don't want to know uh, between like fourteenth and tenth. I think that would be like a barometer of success for those guys if they can finish up there, which means that they're going to be in and amongst guys like, um, say, a Bournemouth, who else is down there as well. If I'm going off last season, then you're looking at maybe like West Ham, um, Newcastle, who will be looking to do different things this season, obviously with Benitez gone as well. They're going to want, I think they're going to be wanting to go for that literal, like, just that lower mid table, not literally almost the bottom of the table. I don't think that's going to happen to them. So in terms of Liverpool, spoken a lot about Norwich, need to speak about Liverpool. Liverpool have made barely any signings and a lot of fans are in uproar about it on Twitter. People still holding out the fact that, you know, tomorrow is the transfer deadline day and that Liverpool are rumoured to make a deadline day signing. I don't think it's going to happen and I'm completely happy with the team that we have. You have to remember that we've spent all of, a lot of money last season we brought players in, we brought in Allison. we brought in, you know, Van Dijk in the January previous. You know, we brought in big, big players, Fabinho, Navi Keita had come in, Shakiri had come in as well. I'm probably missing someone as well. We had class talents as well come in over the couple of years with Andy Robertson, Trent Alexander-Arnold coming through to the fore and coming, you know, coming into the team and making their names, making them a name stay in there. Joe Gomez making progress as well. We're stacked in the midfield. Up front, we might be a little bit light. I am gutted that we did let Harry Wilson go on loan to Bournemouth, but I'm happy it was Bournemouth and it's in the Premier League. I'm happy that he's going to be getting Premier League experience and he will inevitably get more minutes than he did at Liverpool. What it will show us with the Harry Wilson loan is, is he made for the Premier League? Is he fit for the Premier League? And if so, he then comes back to us because there's no option to buy for Bournemouth next year. He goes on loan, he comes back, we assess. Can we sell him? Is he worth selling? Is he not at our level? Or can he operate at our level and we develop him from there? That is the purpose of the loan. And it's a good one that it's in the Premier League. It's at a footballing, a proper footballing club at Bournemouth. And I'm happy about that. In terms of us coming up against Norwich, I feel we had a very good performance against Manchester City, particularly in the second half. First half was a bit drab. First half, we were getting overran. They were, their pressure was getting to us. But then we managed to pin Manchester City back in, um, I don't even know what I just said, uh, which cup game was it? This It was the Community Shield, that was the one. Um, so yes, it gave me a bit of reinvigoration that when we come up against Norwich, we are going to be up for it. We've got our first team pretty much back. Mane, I think, is back in the building. He's been training this week, which has been great to see. There is a chance that Sadio Mane could start. But if not, he can come on and he can affect the play later on. What does that mean for us in terms of starting 11? For me, this is going to sound like last season. In goal, Allison, Robertson on the left-hand side, Van Dijk. Now, the biggest conundrum is, does he go with Joe Gomez or does he go with Joel Matip? <sighs> the consistency in me wants to go with Joel Matip because he played a lot of last season and did very, very well. But I can't ignore how great Van Dijk and Joe Gomez were together at the start of last season, right up until Joe Gomez got injured. We conceded barely any goals. And I'm not saying that's down to Joe Matic coming in when we conceded goals and stuff like that. that. That's not the case. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm saying is, ah, 
I wish I could start all three of them. I wish we would play a three. No, I don't wish we would play a three at the back. No, let's not let's not do that. Three at the back has gone with Chelsea and Antio, Antonio Conte. That's yeah. Let's get that thought out of the mind straight away. God, early morning thoughts are about. So yeah, I think he's going to go Joe Gomez personally. Now the only reason he might not go Joe Gomez and Virgil Van Dijk at centre back is because Trent Alexander Arnold looked a little bit lacklustre against Man City. Looked quite quite off the pace. Looked a bit slow. Didn't look to be getting up and down the lines, very at ease, even though he's had pre-season as well. The only reason he might not do that is he might put Joe Gomez at right back and put Matip and Van Dijk as a partnership and leave Trent out for a little bit, which he has done in the past as well. I don't personally like it, not because I don't want, you know, I don't want Trent in the team or I don't want Joe, Go Joe Gomez or Joe Matip in the team. I don't think, we know Joe Gomez is a centre-back. We know that now. We know it true. We, that is just what he is. He is a centre-back. He can operate as a right-back. But against a team that is going to be looking to hit you with pace on the wings, I want someone that is a right-back. And I'd have to have Trent Alexander-Arnold there. Or Hover. Hoover. Well, however you say, it, say his name. Whichever way you want to go, that is how I would do it. I'm spending a lot of time on this now. But it's I'm, I'm excited, guys. It's the first game of the season, and I'm really excited for it. Now, we move into midfield. Midfield looked a little bit iffy in the first half, but second half against Manchester City, we looked a lot better. Now, I still think Fabinho is going to be the rock at our, in our midfield, whether we go forward and we play a 4-3-3, a 4-2-3-1, whatever we play. I still feel Fabinho will be the guy. It's who you put around him as well. Jordan Henderson, good player, very good player and did very well for us, especially towards the end of the season and also in the Champions League final as well. But you've got options of Naby Keita, Adam Lallana, which still raises my eyebrow. I don't care how positively Jurgen Klopp talks about him. It's still going to raise an eyebrow, especially when we're looking at him being played as like an Andrea Perlo, a number six. He's not Andrea Perlo. It's not Syria. So let's, yeah, I'm, I'm exiting that thought from my mind straight away. Fabinho needs to be in there, in my opinion. He's fantastic and he's great in front of our back four as well. I'm going at this as if we're going to play a 4-3-3, which I think we probably will. Um, now, who do we put next to him? I would go with Naby Keita. He's going to give us dynamism and, and actual movement in the midfield. And then probably Jordan Henderson or Genie Wijnaldum. One of the two, but I imagine it will probably be Henderson. Genie Wijnaldum might drop to the bench or he's going to go and put Naby Keita on the bench and you'll have Wijnaldum, Henderson and Fabinho. Either combination of that, I'm absolutely okay with. Now, we move forward. Haven't talked about Oxlade-Chamberlain yet because he could probably be our cover on the left-hand side, a position that he had done over pretty much every other position that he did when he played at Arsenal. We used to play at right-back. He used to play in centre-mid like one time, played a really great game, and then they moved him from there. Then, played him right, right mid, on right wing. They'd probably play him on left wing as well. Probably played him in goal if they could have. Um... He will probably be our cover on the left-hand side until Mane comes back. There is obviously the sneaking chance that Mane could come into this game because he's been training this week, but he hasn't had a pre-season, so I doubt it very much. He might come into the game later on, which could be great. He could affect the game really well later on as well. And then Bobby Firmino, who looked sharp as a diamond against Man City and just didn't get the rub of the green in terms of chances, but he looked very, very sharp. And Mo Salah as well looked exceptionally sharp as well. Missed a lot of chances against City. But that's nothing to be held against him. I'd rather he miss the, miss the chances in that game and take them in the first Premier League game as well. Now, how do I see this game going down? If we go out there full force and full team like I've just said and most of the positions that we have, if we go out there, I honestly think that we can go out there and win this game. I'm not saying we're going to smash Norwich like a lot of people are saying. I'm not saying we're going to take Norwich to bits. I'm saying as long as we win, I'm happy. And I think we can go out there. I think we can possibly keep a clean sheet. This is without having seen Norwich play last season, honestly. So I really just have gone off a lot of information that I've read, statistics as well, which I don't always like to go off. But I think that we can go out there. I would love to see us keep a clean sheet. And I'm going to try and predict that we are going to keep a clean sheet, despite not keeping many in pre-season. I don't think we kept any, did we? Did we? Did we keep any? I can't remember. Apart from maybe when we played Tranmere, and this isn't a Tranmere level. So yes, I'm going to go out there and say that we're going to win 
2-0. 2-0 to Liverpool on Friday night. Friday night is when it all kicks off. Loving it. Can't wait. Honestly, can't wait. I am good. If I can get out of work somehow earlier, then I, then I absolutely will be getting out of work earlier. But most likely, I won't be getting out of work earlier. I'm going to miss, have to miss the first half. But those of you that can enjoy the full game, enjoy it to the fullest. And hopefully, it can be a great start to the season for all of us. Thank you so much for watching this video, the very first video of the 2019-20 season. If you have enjoyed it, please do like it and subscribe if you are new around here. Get your comments in below. What are your predictions and what is your starting lineup prediction as well? Any changes, anyone that I might have missed out, let me know it in the comments below. Thank you once again and I'll catch you later.